Hello everyone, this is Highlander from MTG Cardsmith doing another custom Magic the Gathering card review. And today we're reviewing another card by our good friend and man of God, Jay Pastor. Um, so what do we got here? He sent us a card called Retreat to Tree Palace. It's one and two green for an enchantment. Uh, this is cool art. Let's just kind of look at this for a second. Yeah, this is cool art. I like this. Look at that. That's really neat. All right. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, untap target creature you control. Prevent all combat damage that will be dealt to that creature this turn. Interesting. Okay. Um, five mana. Create a zero five legendary green plant wall creature token with defender named Tree Palace. It has tap, add green. Okay. Um, so let's see. Oh, let's read this flavor text. Uh, it towers high above the untamed canopy. Pray they don't learn to climb. Not bad. Uh, who's they, though? Who's they? I want to know who they are. Um, all right. So let's see. So we got a three-man enchantment here. Doesn't do... Okay, so without this ability here whenever a green oh a green creature whenever a green creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control untapped target creature you control prevent all common damage that will be dealt to that creature this turn okay this is a very minor ability um and the reason for it is because your opponent can play around it so i i, I may be wrong here but i think the idea behind this ability is that <clears throat> They play a creature, a green, it has to be a green creature. Um, and then it, uh, you basically get to get like a free blocker, essentially, right? For, for, for combat every time they play a green creature. But the issue with that is they can play their creatures after combat, of course. So this really will only come into effect if there is something that forces the other player to create creatures before combat like some sort of triggered effect you know something on your upkeep or maybe like an attack trigger on a creature though of course they could just choose not to attack with that creature um so this is like an incredibly specific ability right not only not only does it only work against in those sort of rare situations that i talked about but also it's only green creatures so it's like a sideboard ability against a green deck that like is like making tokens on its upkeep or something. I, I'm not sure. Like it, it's it's it, basically what I'm saying is this ability is so specific it it it's might as well not be there, essentially. Um Okay, so for as for the second ability, so you can pay five, you can make a zero five green plant wall with defender and it can add mana. Okay, that's that's um, that's neat. Now, here's kind of the issue with this card so far is, so you you play this this thing this thing costs three, right? So if you play this on three, you're not doing anything else on your turn, right? Uh, this this ability likely will not matter. So you're playing this on three, and it does absolutely nothing, okay? On four, it does nothing. So you've spent your turn three doing nothing and not contributing anything to your board, right? Now, turn five, <clears throat> you can start making green plants. And they're pretty big, so it's like there's a reasonable shot. They'll be able to prevent some damage coming at you. Um, but they can't attack... And by turn five, uh, you have a decent amount of mana already. So the fact that it's adding additional mana um, is not as relevant as it would be early. Now, obviously, there are decks that can, you know, that don't mind making a lot of mana. And I mean, once you get a lot of mana going, this, you know, you can start pumping out two of these a turn, three, you know, who knows? I mean, you can you can make a lot of mana, but it's really slow, right? I mean, you have to you have to really commit to this. <clears throat> where on turn five you play this, you get a zero five, 
right? And then the next turn, assuming you drop a land, you have seven mana. So it's like you pay this again, you get like another blocker, and you have like two mana left over, and then next turn, assuming you have a land drop, you have nine mana, so you still can't make two of them. Um, and that's, of course, assuming that a 0-5 is big enough to defend against what your opponent's throwing at you. I mean, if they have like a uh, like a Titan or something, uh, these don't even block it. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, would I, would I play this card? I it, it just, it feels to me like there's better ways to get, like, there's, be there's better ways to get mana ramp, and there's better ways to defend yourself, and th this is kind of combining both of those things, um, but not particularly well right so <clears throat> one thing one possibility one thing you might do to this card to uh to, to sort of boost it maybe is you could instead of this ability here you can make it so that when this comes into play it just creates the green plant wall right away right um and then maybe for five you can populate right so now now you can like <clears throat> make copies of the the plant wall that you've already created. But hey, if you're if you've got other tokens running around, you can start making those. Um, you know, if you want to start attacking, it becomes a little bit of like a rampy tokeny kind of card. This one, I have a hard time seeing it seeing where it exactly fits. Um, I mean, clearly you. Clearly, you would want this in a deck that wants to generate mana and needs defense, right? So a deck that wants to just, like, play, cast Emrakul or something, right? But, it just I mean, if you're going to do that, it's like you just play Sneak Attack or something, you know? It's like, um, or, like, Gaia's Cradle does a much better job of casting Emrakul than this thing does, right? Like, this thing's just so slow. Um... So, yeah, I mean, I have a hard time seeing this card fit anywhere. Um, if this, okay, if this ability to create the token cost four, would that be OP? It would be a lot stronger in that case, but it would curve out kind of nicely. It's like three and then four. Excuse me. Um... Okay, I mean, it is worth mentioning that this ability here can untap your your plants, but, like, it's on your opponent's turn, so the mana is not... It's green mana, right? So it's not super likely you'll be able to make use of it. I mean... Uh, I mean, I, okay, so I, I, I... It does sort of help you with this a little bit, I suppose. Right? So, okay, so you pay five. Uh, you get a plant wall, right? <clears throat> Next turn, you have seven mana. You pay five, including the wall, which the wall can't block now. Uh, and then on the opponent's turn, you know, three mana if they play a green creature. And then the turn... Uh, so so you can't sort of reuse the, the, the tree here. And then on the next turn, turn... So that was turn six, then... Sorry, that was turn... Yeah, turn six... On turn seven, you have nine mana if you've dropped a land. So you've, you've tap, tap, tap. Uh, so now you have four left over, and now you can actually start. If your opponent plays a green creature, you can make an additional plant wall on their turn. But that's assuming they've played green creatures. And also you now leave your zero fives back. Or excuse me, you can't block with your zero fives really anymore, right? Because you've tapped them for mana because you want to get the untap value, right? So <clears throat> still seems pretty pretty minor. Um, you know, maybe if this gave you the ability to play creatures at, uh, with, at flash speed, then, then it might uh, kind of come into play there. Um, I don't know exactly. There's definitely a lot of ways you can you can modify this card depending on what direction you want to go. But right now, it just seems a little bit too narrow and a little bit too weak uh, to 
to want to put it in a deck. It's an interesting idea, certainly. Like, I kind of like the idea of creating these, like, big plant walls that can tap for mana. Um, <clears throat> but I think really the the biggest... One of the biggest issues with this card is the fact that you play this on turn three or whatever turn, uh, you know, you're, you're going to play it on, and you've just done nothing, and you can't do anything until turn five, and your turn five is... I mean, pretty weak, you know, it, it just takes like a long time to get going and you're sacrificing a turn to play this. So like you, you know, you're, you're going to be on the, on the back foot already. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's certainly tough because it, it, you know, an ability like this can quickly go awry, you know, being able to just sort of create tokens that help you create more tokens. I mean, if you ever played against Sprout Swarm, in uh in limited <clears throat> you can see how absurd that is but of course sprout swarm is an extreme example right i mean so anyway I, the, enough talking about this card i i i like some of the ideas here i really like the art um i i think that th the combination of these abilities doesn't quite work together the way you would want them to and it's just a like I mentioned, it's a very slow card. It 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 really doesn't give you anything until later. Like you probably wouldn't play this until turn eight a lot of the time. And by like turn eight, like I mean, you want to be playing Ugans and stuff, you know. Like you don't want to be playing Retreat to Tree Palace, make a zero five. So yeah, um, so yeah, I mean that's kind of how I feel about this card. Um, I'd like to see some modifications to this card to see if you can sort of turn it into something a little bit more more uh, more interesting. Um, so I'd be curious. I'd be curious about that. Um, so yeah, uh, that's kind of how I feel about this card. What what do I give this card as a rating? Um, I think unfortunately I have to give this one a. Unfortunately, I have to give this one a five out of ten. I mean, it is. <clears throat> it's well formatted, right? So the card looks nice. It's well formatted. It's got a really nice picture. Um, there's really no issues with the 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 um, presentation of the card. Um, but I just the the design doesn't seem fully thought through to me. And I mean, <clears throat> maybe I'm missing something. You know, I could be wrong, of course, too. But it, it just doesn't quite seem to really get there for me. Um, so, so yeah, that's how I feel about Retreat Tree Palace. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.